This is economics. In case you forgot what class you were in, this is chapter eight, the stock market. Welcome back, students, to your first online class in economics. Uh, just a couple heads up, a couple reminders for you guys in case you are wondering. You should have taken your economics chapter seven test by this point. You're responsible for getting that done. Um, and then we are beginning chapter 8. The plan is to be able to cover the entire chapter in these three videos. Remember, you can always pause this video and go back to have me repeat a definition or uh, a note that I'd ask you to get. So hopefully we can cover these 45-minute lessons in less than 15 minutes. Uh, that's the plan. We'll see how that goes. Um, you will be on page 146 in your textbooks. Uh, again, there will be times in which I ask you to read a certain section. I'll ask you to pause the video, and then you'll read it, and then you'll unpause it and come right back to it. So, uh, just a few think thoughts as we open up with this chapter. The parable of the talents is one of the clearest illustrations in Scripture concerning the principle of stewardship. The passage, found in Matthew 25, indicates the priority of putting to good use the resources that God has entrusted to us. It is interesting to note in light of some concerns about the stock market that the servant who was condemned by his master did nothing with the talent that had been entrusted to him. The master even suggested to him that he should have at least permitted the talent to earn interest instead of doing nothing. A long-term investment strategy that includes stocks is not a significantly greater risk than a savings account, and it will certainly earn a greater return. Stewardship requires that we balance the marginal benefit of an investment strategy, expect a return, against the marginal cost, the risk of loss, and make our decisions accordingly. Now, on page 146, if you could read the first four paragraphs on that page to yourself, uh, pause this video, and then we'll resume in a moment. All right. Roman number one, stock. The definition of stock is portions of ownership in a corporation. Portions of ownership in a corporation. Anyone purchasing one or more shares can now participate in the activities of an old owner. Uh, some information about what stockholders can do. <laughs> As this cartoon says, once again, I stand proudly before you to beg for another chance. Stockholders can dot dot dot. Number one, cast votes on business decisions. Voting takes place in periodic shareholder meetings. Number two, stockholders can elect a board of directors. The board of directors will make all of the day-to-day -day decisions. Number three, they will hire or fire managers. Number four, they will expand into a new market. And number five, simply to encapsulate everything and more. Dot, dot, dot. Just about any important decision regarding the financial well-being of the firm can be dealt with by the stockholders. The fact of the matter is the greater the stock holdings, the greater the responsibility. If a stockholder, for example, holds more than 50% of the stocks, he will be its majority owner and would have control of that corporation. However, not all stocks are equal. Let's talk about it. Letter A, types of stocks. Number one, common stock. Definition for common stock is the most prevalent type of stock and represents true ownership of the firm. For example, if you own 10,000 shares of stock in a corporation that has 100,000 shares available, you quickly do the math, you realize you own 10% of that corporation. A few other things that common stock allows the individual to do, they are able to vote on business matters. We've talked about this power before. This includes all of the actions mentioned in the last slide. And lastly, 
They are last to receive dividends. Uh, you need a definition for dividends. A dividend is a distribution of a portion of a company's profits. After all expenses have been paid, then the common stockholders can receive their dividends. If a corporation files bankruptcy, common stockholders are again the last to receive any payments. So the benefits, you vote on business matters. The drawback, you're going to be the last ones to receive dividends. That is known as common stock. Number two, preferred stock. Preferred stock. Definition for you is that this kind of stock has to do with stockholders who receive their dividends before the common stockholders. They receive their dividends before the common stockholders. Not much of a definition, more of an explanation as to what that makes them different. Hence, though, the word preferred. If the corporation goes bankrupt, preferred stockholders receive their dividends before the common stockholders do. But preferred is not necessarily better in all categories. The one drawback, they do not vote on business matters. They are not owners of the corporation. Common stockholders do vote. Preferred stock members do not vote. That's the key difference along with when they receive dividends that matters letter b selling stock if you turn in your books please to page 148 please read the teal box called stock trading 101 to yourself please pause the video now and then resume when you have finished some definitions of the stock market, the stocks that we're going to talk about, first of all, that you saw in your reading, is first of all the word stockbroker. Definition of a stockbroker is a person specializing in buying and selling stocks for clients. The next term is commission. Definition of commission is the fee paid for a stockbroker's services. Next, floor trader. A person on the trading floor who makes requested trades. Tape. Uh, there used to be a day in which it was literal paper tape that they would use. Of course, today that's not the case. Definition for this is an electronic message board indicating stock prices and transactions. Business owners may seek to take advantage of the limited liability and legal status they gain by organizing their business as a corporation, yet choose not to offer of their corporation's stock for public sale. They do so to retain complete control of the business and its profits. But what if the goal is to raise revenue with stocks? Simple answer sell them. They must first register their business with the stock market and then arrange for the sale of their company stock through an investment bank. The IPO, or Initial Public Offering. First of all, you need to know what IPO stands for. You see it right there. Now let's give you a definition. Initial Public Offering is the term for a corporation's first sale of stock. First sale of stock. Um, it is noteworthy that sometimes a business will offer less than half of the company's total stock. The reason is because the original owners may want to retain a majority holding of the stock of the company. They decide they have 50,000 shares. They want to sell 20,000 shares to investors. It helps them make money. But at the same time, they are also able to maintain control because they still are the majority shareholders. Simple as that. Corporations use the capital they raise for various business needs. Expansion, salaries, hiring more people, etc., etc. Lastly today, let's talk about buying stock. Why do people buy stocks? There are 
two basic reasons, and you know, they're two sides of the same coin, really. But there is an explanation. We have to explain the key difference between these two views. Reasons to buy. Number one, to make a profit. Investors make a profit by following the simple rule. Buy low and sell high. I guess the idea of making a profit is you want to succeed immediately, quickly. You want to play the market. You want to win fast. That's the point, to make a profit. The other method is to receive what are called dividend payments. Investors may purchase stocks they believe will steadily increase in value, thereby providing them with consistent income growth. Or they may purchase stocks based on the quality of projected dividend payments. So this is kind of the idea of going in for the long haul. You invest in the stock market. The idea is that uh, you're going to spread it out some, and then you're planning on lasting for an extended period of time. In other words, perhaps with fantasy football, those of you who are interested in that, are you going to go in for the long haul? Or are you going to go in for one payment? Are you going to get this quarterback to help you win this one game? Or are you going to find someone who you think will be consistently good throughout the entire season? That's the difference between to make a profit here now or to receive the dividend payments over a long period of time. All right, that's all the notes we're going to cover for today. For your homework, you're going to do pages 91 and 92 in your activities book. Real quickly, some information about this homework. Um, it looks more difficult than it actually is, but on page 91, it shows you exactly uh, the ex example that they set for you. So a day in the life of a stock, how to read the stock pages. You're to read the information. It, it shows you how it all works, and then it fills in the box for you. After having read the information, you then read page 92 and do it yourself. If you have any questions, please email me or communicate your questions specifically to me or Skype me. Um, do what you need to do in order to be able to understand this homework. If, if, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is all we got covered for today. Thank you for listening in. Have a good day. Be good. Do good.